Dobrý den, dámy a pánové. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to present a short uh, contribution to this conference. My name is Svatopluk Mirel. I am the vice chairman of the Association uh, of Agriculture of the Czech Republic and also uh, an owner of an uh, agricultural business in South Moravia. Uh, to, to, the name of today's conference is the future of the uh, Czech agriculture, but I would like to say that uh, also European agriculture faces problems. And to know what to do, uh, we should uh, remember the history. After the First World War, one third of all uh, land uh, in the Czech Republic uh, was owned uh, by big aristocratic uh, uh, families and they owned 22% of all uh, the agricultural land and almost 31% of all the land of Czechoslovakia. The owners of large aristocratic farms represented only 0.04% of all landowners. Small farmers managed only 7% of the land in Czechoslovakia, but at the same time they accounted for 68% of all the landowners. The farming nature of the Czechoslovak economy was partly strengthened by the land reform. The hunger for land was enormous. The Schwarzenberg family owned 248,000 hectares of land. The Liechtenstein family held 173,000 hectares. The Archdiocese of Prague held 23,000 hectares, etc. Within 20 years, only 44% of all the land seized was parceled out. A small allocation of up to 30 hectares was granted to 640,000 people. However, the land office created 2,500 so-called residual large farms with total area of 230,000 hectares of the best land, which were partly acquired by individuals or companies affiliated to the agrarian, agrarian party. Now I would like to present a short video where you can see that uh, individual parcels of land uh, uh, were combined uh, quite uh, quickly. Osobně bych se chtěl podívat na místa, která byla vyfotografována tak před 50 lety. Současnou situaci studuje vědec z Národního ústavu pro zemědělský výzkum Mark Benoit. Jeho cílem je porovnat ze vzduchu francouzskou krajinu 60. let s tou dnešní. Přírodní region Bos představuje největší zemědělskou plochu ve Francii. Má dva charakteristické rysy. Nerostou zde velké stromy, jen malé hajky a je to odedávna obilnice země. A dalším rysem je výrazné seskupení lidských příbytků. Vesnice Fens dole pod námi je prostě úžasná. Najdeme v ní všechno. Typickou místní strukturu, panské domy, sila, lesík, rozlehlá pole. Krajina je strukturována především velikostí a vzájemným uspořádáním polí. Mark letí nad rozlehlými pro zdejší krajinu typickými čtverhranými farmami. Co se zde během posledního půlstoletí událo? Porovnejme to, co vidíme dnes, s fotografiemi pořízenými na stejných místech v 60. letech. Například tyto tři farmy. Na fotografii z roku 1966 napočítáme 126 políček s různými plodinami. Satelitní fotografie ze současnosti nám jich ukáže pouze 50. Zcelování pozemků ovlivnili uniformizace zemědělských kultur a pokles počtu zemědělců. Francouzskou půdu dnes obdělává nový typ rolníků. So shortly, 
In 1939, there were two French studying the situation in Czechoslovakia, and this is how they characterized the South's success of cooperatives. The Czechoslovakia can be considered the best uh, uh, model, the best example for cooperative farming, even though in some countries uh, like Denmark and their uh, medical cooperatives, as uh, uh, can have could have better results. No country uh, was similar uh, as uh, the situation in Czechoslovakia. However, in our country, the world cooperative uh, or co cooperative farming has turned into a term of the past of history, but in all countries, uh, all other countries of the European Union, farming is mainly done by cooperatives because small farmers would not be able uh, to uh, uh, push to sell their uh, products to, to the retail chains. The development of agriculture in the Czech Republic after 1989 uh, was such that agriculture in the Czech Republic was one of the strongly preferred sectors. The transition to a market economy meant significant pressure for agriculture to adapt to new economic conditions and market opportunities. Up to 1989, there was no private sector. Two-thirds of agricultural land was farmed by agricultural cooperatives, and one-third of the land in the country belonged to state farms. The average area of agricultural land in cooperatives was uh, 2,500 hectares, and it was 6,200 hectares in state farms. By the end of 1990, 3,200 private, private farms were run by individuals in the Czech Republic. However, these persons managed less than 1% of the agricultural land. The, towards the end of, two, of 2017, uh, 3 million 521,000 hectares, it means 84% of the total area of agricultural land was used for farming. Individuals were farming approximately 30% of the agricultural land area, of which agricultural entrepreneurs farmed 27% of the total area of agricultural land. The remaining 69% uh, of agricultural land was farmed by legal entities, namely joint stock companies 24.5%, limited liability companies 25% cooperatives, 18.7%, uh, other legal entities, 08 So this shows what the structure was like. And uh, uh, after 1990, there, was, uh, there were efforts to break down this structure, but nobody asks uh, farmers the whether they really uh, want to manage their home farms because they had no facilities. So uh, nobody asked them whether they wanted uh, to uh, restart uh, their farming. And the current situation uh, and the current policy shows new efforts again. Uh, there, uh, we are uh, uh, we are really competitive in the European Union in farming and also on the global level, but unfortunately, uh, the situation uh, does not correspond to uh, what would be desirable. So I would like to present another video. Tady na území bývalého východního Německa můžeme pozorovat, že struktura krajiny je jiná než na západě. 
Jsou zde obrovská pole, dědictví po zemědělských družstvech a kolektivizaci. Velmi ostře se odlišují od rozparcelovanější krajiny, se kterou se setkáváme na západě. Je to svým způsobem pozůstatek historie dvou německých států. Stopa, kterou po sobě zanechali socioekonomické struktury, které zde po několik desetiletí převažovaly. Zemědělské modely obou bývalých částí Německa poznamenaly krajinu různým způsobem, a to tak hluboce, že na mapě je ještě patrná bývalá hranice. Tmavě zelená barva vyznačuje hospodářství, rozkládající se na ploše více než 250 hektarů. Ta se nachází převážně na východě. Světlejší zelení jsou pak vyznačeny zemědělské podniky hospodařící na méně než 20 hektarech půdy. Těch je naopak nejvíce na západě. Pokud jde o chov dobytka, modely jsou identické s tím, že na východě dosahují počty stát rekordních čísel. Tato stará zemědělská družstva byla přeměněna na moderní agroindustriální korporace. Obzvlášť významné místo zaujímá chov kuřat a vepřů. Německo produkuje i pro světový trh a zemědělské výrobky vyváží ve velkém. Tyto velké struktury jsou k tomu účelu velice vhodné. V těchto budovách probíhá intenzivní chov asi 12 000 kuřat. O kousek dál jsou vepříny pro více než 6 000 kusů prasat. Velmi zajímavé je, že se tak obrovský zemědělský podnik nachází uprostřed lesa. Jak jste mohli vidět, As you jste, could see, jako these farms are considered modern, uh, prosperous <coughs> businesses. <coughs> On the other hand, <coughs> other hand in our country, <coughs> they are referred to as uh, entities that uh, cause <coughs> damage to the <coughs> landscape, to the environment, <coughs> and have no future. Of course, small farmers uh, have their place, uh, they have their role in agriculture, and they are important uh, in terms of diversity, but uh, they should provide about 5% of the production, while the rest uh, should be ensured by big farms because having 15 to 20 cows, 20, 30 pigs makes no economical sense today. So for the government, uh, or, or instead of supporting those who just uh, uh, aim at gaining subsidies, the government should support those who really produce uh, we must motivate next generation uh, to want to manage uh, these farms uh, and we should support those. Uh, the agriculture is not left or right uh, or, or at the medium of the political spectrum. There is just one agriculture and the population uh, should respect the work of farmers because during the COVID pandemics as well as today, the farmers have to get up, uh, to, to wake up early in the morning uh, to do the daily work. But what the future of every, every agriculture is? Uh, there is a new plan uh, for the years following 2030. So what are the uh, targets to support viability, to support competitiveness, uh, fight against the change climate, uh, support to employment and growth, uh, ensuring high quality of food? Uh, everybody selects uh, the, uh, nice topics, but uh, nobody really acts. And uh, today in Europe and mainly in the Czech Republic, we can see that the situation is opposite uh, uh, the goals we have seen. Uh, agriculture is a marine vessel which cannot be turned in a different direction based on the type of the government. Uh, the policy must be set up for 10, 10 20 years uh, ahead. 
So changes cannot be made with a change of the minister because each farm should be serving for 30, 40 years. And uh, now uh, the farmers uh, uh, face decisions whether to close down uh, some part of their business because they are not able to sustain everything. And if uh, Europe uh, is to be united, uh, everybody should have the same condition and uh, individual countries should also provide, should be able to provide support. Uh, as long as the redistrib redistribution rate is 10% uh, at minimum, that should also be a top threshold, because otherwise uh, situations occur like in the Czech Republic when 10% turn 30. And this led uh, uh, to uh, problems uh, and conflicts, conflicts among farmers. And if the rate here is 31 euro and in Austria it is 70, we cannot really compete. So finally, I would like to recap on what my peacekeeper said uh, in relation to the energy crisis and its uh, impacts on agriculture. Fertilizer prices uh, have increased three times. Uh, uh, energy spot prices in September were 15 crowns per kilowatt hour. Uh, uh, in uh, and it increased, they increased significantly just in a month. Uh, in September, we decided to buy gas, and we were told to, to buy gas uh, because there was fear there would be none, and we bought it, but it was, uh, compared to the last year, uh, the price was 14 times higher. So it is really hard uh, to manage farms in such conditions. We farmers are really resilient. There are, there are things we cannot influence like the weather, but what we do mind are the conditions set by our own politicians. Thank you for attention.